Any G-U-S niggas, Ethiopian kings, we bring things. Ooh. Any G-U-S niggas, Ethiopian kings, we bring things. Them some lyrics I wrote back in 1994. Maybe 1992. Yeah. Hey, yo, get the Anchor app, y'all, so y'all can listen to your boy. Real. Y'all can get the raw, uncut news. Yeah. Get the Anchor app. Greetings. This is Yasha Ben Israel for the Yasha Ben Israel Terry Whitfield Podcast Show. Back at you one more again with some good information for you. You know, this is the place where information reigns. You know, we talk about things that people don't like to talk about. We talk about things that they don't want you to know. Because over here, we got answers. Best to believe it. Today, I got my good, 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 good buddy, Eric. True heart, mad scientist. Yeah, that's my buddy. I got him with me today. And he will be my co-host for today. You know. How you doing, Eric? Hey, how you doing? Peace. Hello. You all right? I'm good. Awesome. Awesome. What's been going on with you, Doc? Uh, nothing. Just been working and, you know, Research and studying like always. Uh oh, what you been researching on, man? Um, just uh, just like different things, you know. Cause I see a lot of the, uh, I see a lot of this new doctrine coming out, and so I just start researching on this, where they getting this stuff from, and um, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like the, the crazy doctrine, like you know, Jesus the serpent at the tree and all that, you know. So yeah, I just start to see where they getting this stuff from, and um. Uh, yeah, I, I, just, I, just, I just see a lot of people are going out of the out of the, out of the scriptures and instead of breaking them down and like we used to do, they're going to other books that that doesn't supposed to uh, be a, be a part of, and that's why I see the problem. Yeah, they 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 uh, uh, uh you got people like Napa, you know, with that in that last debate she had with Jay about the Satan and the serpent is Jesus and all of this foolishness. And God condones rape, and you know where they getting that stuff from? They they, they making it up as they go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then they want to lie, and say that this is esoteric knowledge. You know what I'm saying? But the only esoteric biblical knowledge that you could ever really have on an objective level is Hebrew. If you ain't studying Hebrew and ain't got the Hebrew thought, then your knowledge is not esoteric. Your knowledge is is, is, is is subjective foolishness, subjective rhetoric, you know. It's rhetoric based off your own experiences, your own feelings, your own thoughts, your own knowledge, your own experiences. It's subjective. It's not something that is universally understood and accepted. You understand what I'm saying? You know, when you're yeah, talking about... That's what I'm saying, like, like how, they, how they can look at the Bible, see the laws, see the commandments, and then really think that God accepts rape. Like, that doesn't make sense, and you know what I'm saying? That's why I said these people, they're just trying to... They, 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 there's a lot of people with using Israelite names just to come as an undercover to destroy, to try to destroy the, the true doctrines and add false doctrines to it. Yeah, the, and the tripped out part about it, the only two people that I see really doing that today is people that is a part of the so-called comedic community and atheists, okay? Those are the people that's doing that today, you know? And, and the sad part about it is neither one, all that they, all they do, they, like the Kimmy is really, really, really sick. You know, yeah. because they don't teach their doctrines. No. They don't teach their beliefs. They don't teach their knowledge. They don't even know their knowledge. No. All they know is the word Kemet 
and they want to make it as if though they know something so big and so great about Kemet when they know virtually nothing and their whole philosophy is built around a, a beating up disrespected and dogging out people that believes in the Bible. Yeah. And, and I see, um, and I, like, I, I used to be a comedic when I first came in. When I first came in my class, I was comedic. I was studying under, uh, I was used to listen to SETI all the time. And, uh, and I started to learn, man, I, I, and, I, and I noticed, and that's why I saw another guy mad at me on YouTube. Uh, if you go to the one when he was debating, when he had a uh, Tahuti, no, no, Chief X on there. Yeah. And Chief X was speaking. And he was talking about Egyptians. Uh, some of them are white, and they was and they was uh, portraying themselves as black. You talking about and, the Egyptians or the Etruscans? Well, he was talking about how Egyptians, like the statues, a lot of them were white people actually with wigs on, and they browned the skin of the of the idol to make it seem like they were black people. So, so wow. I know, was like, well, I want you to read it off the walls. I want you to, hey, can you read uh, Meta Netta, this and this and that. So I got on that comment. I said, man, none of y'all can read Meta Netta. How right. you ask somebody else to read Meta Netta when you can't read it? Right, he could have went up there. All it takes is somebody to halfway know something, right? You know what I'm saying? They need to halfway know something and, and, and just go. I mean, if you don't know the language, you can't tell. I, 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 here's a prime example. You will hear these guys go... Uh, Aquat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shalawan. You know? These people don't know the fucking language. And you could tell somebody that's Hebrew, but they don't know the language. They can't challenge you and tell you whether that's Hebrew or a or, or fucking Martian talk. You, you understand what I'm saying? They, can't, they just can't do that. Now, I speak Hebrew, and I know that's trash. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's just like English. You know, you speak English, and you could talk to a man and tell whether he speaks English well or whether his English is all broken and fucked up, right? Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. just how it is with, with any other language. If you know the language, you could tell how well, you could tell, like like English, I could tell, there's something like Divine Prospect, for instance. And I would even go as far as saying Zion Lex and Mighty Hebrew. Those boys are very, very articulate. In English, not Hebrew, just English. They're very, very, very articulate men. Especially that divine prospect. Very articulate. You know, and you, you could tell by the way he talks that he's an educated man and he speaks very, very, very good English. Yeah. You know, now you listen to the English this I never talk. That man, that man sounds like he a high school dropout. Am I lying? His, I'm talking about not in his knowledge, but just his pronunciation of English words. Yeah. I mean, because to me, like I said, comedics don't, like you said, they don't learn, they, never, they don't learn their history like that. They don't learn their research. They learn just to attack the Bible. And like when I first came a comedic, that's why I was taught. I wasn't taught just to say the Bible was fake, just attack the Bible, attack this, attack that. And I never learned anything. And when I started learning comedics, I started learning that how they was worshiping the sun, how they honor the sun and all that stuff. And so I got, that's what made me get out of it. Because I always, anything I ever did, I say I would never disrespect God. Or, you know what I'm saying? So as far as me, I always had belief in God. So when I see that this, this, when I seen that they didn't believe in God, they, and the gods they was talking about was basically astrology, religion, you know what I'm saying, and, and that nature, I, 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 I was like, no, I ain't dealing with this, you know what I'm saying? But I know a lot of them don't even know. A lot of them still use Greek names. Like, a lot of them still say, oh, it's Osiris, and all they were knowing that that's not the real meta meta names. Yeah. Just like when they say Kemet, Kemet is only a part. The whole thing was called some Tymeri. You know what I'm saying? So they don't, they don't, they don't really know. So when I when I listen to a comedian and I hear him talk, I know how knowledgeable he is just from sitting here and what he's saying. Yeah. And I'm not supposed to be way more knowledgeable than he is because all these years of being under all these comedic people, you telling me you still cannot read the meta metal? Yeah, and I'm like, I, I'm gonna give you a good example of a guy who I think is good. I think, I think Tahuti's good. Uh, have you heard Tahuti get down? Yeah, but to me, he's more like a, uh, I don't know, because 
Well, I guess I can. I guess I can. Well, I, 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 go ahead. You can inspire because if you know what I am, I, I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. <laughs> I don't think you. No, I, mean, I don't think. I, I don't think. I don't think. I, 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 I kind of like them, and I kind of like Jabari because they are, they are at least admitting that Kimmy had a uh, belief system. Yeah, you know, I like them guys because they they expound upon their knowledge. That's it. For, I, I'm not saying that Tahuti is this great Egyptologist. Yeah. You know, I think he be kicking some fucked up shit too. But I can tell that he studies. Yeah. You understand? He can take you through dimensions that you can't go through on your own because you probably never gave a fuck about it enough to go to those depths. Just like me. I can take you through dimensions in this walk, this Hebrew walk, because I know things that you you might have never gave a fuck about. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. I can speak the language. I can go to the original text. And many Israelites believe that that stuff is Yiddish and it just don't make no sense for me to learn it. Yeah. But because you didn't learn it, I have. So I can go to, through dimensions that you can't, no matter what language you think this is. Yeah. You know, one of the things E that always bothered me, man, was when people shun and reject knowledge. You know, I've never was that type of man, man. You know, even as a Christian, I was reading shit like Madame Blavatsky. You know what I'm saying? As a Christian, I was reading shit like Aliester Crowley and, uh, 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 What's my man name? Manly P. Hall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, uh, cat, I, was, I was even going as far as looking into stuff like Zachariah Kinchin. You know, I wasn't turning down nothing. I didn't believe none of that stuff them people was talking about. But I was well read. Yeah. So, I mean, I always tell people this. And that's why I tell people I'm so, I'm so good when it comes to debating. Because... I don't, when I debate somebody, I have to know what they believe in. So if you're a Satanist, I'm going to, I'm going to study Satanism. I'm going to read that Bible. I want to do everything I can. So when I attack you, you can't come at me like I don't know. That hey, like, me. like, Mal saying. like Malcolm X said, you want to know his angle. <laughs> yeah, I want to know where the angle you come from. Because if you debate somebody blinded, they're going to always lose. And that's why a lot of comedians lose, because they really don't read scripture. They really don't research scripture. So when they come at you... They come at you. They come at you with with, with a straw. They come at you. They come at you with a logical fallacy called the straw man argument. You know what I'm saying? You can't call yourself. See, when you debate me, you can't sit up there and look at it like I'm debating the Israelites. You have to debate me, bro. Because if you come to me with a with a pre Planned argument exactly. under the supposition that you think I believe in this bullshit these other people believe in. When that bell go ding, I'm gonna shake your ass right, right out the frame. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because you have a whole straw man argument. You have an argument that wasn't even tailored for me. Yeah. Now, how in the hell? Can you win an argument and your argument... It's just like if he had an argument tailored for you, but he used it against me. There's no way on the earth that this man is supposed to win, man. But the comedics are cheap, a cheap for him. And that's why you notice people like Sarnetta. That's why you notice Polite. People like Amara. That's why they never tell you what exactly what they believe and what they are because they know they don't tell. They don't, you they don't want because they don't because they know they know why they beating up on your beliefs. They know that when you tell them what you believe in, our belief system is much more established than theirs. Cause that stuff like Tahuti. Me and Tahuti had a preliminary that never evolved into a debate because. He couldn't, he couldn't come up with a topic. You know, he swear he wanted to beat up on Israelites until he met me. <laughs> when he met me, all that shit stopped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He started he start picking and choosing his opponents wisely. You know, you just can't come in this game thinking everybody's a dummy and a fool, bro. 
You know, I've been taught by some of the some of the greatest African American historians, bro. Exactly. You know, I am a student of Joel A. Rogers. Yeah. I come from the Joel A. Rogers University, bro. How? Yeah. Because my because my teacher, one of my teachers in this blackness was Judge Adam Shakur. Okay, Judge Adam Shakur was Chuckaway Lumumba's uh, uh, law partner. They owned a law firm together. And Adam Sh Dr. Adam Shakur and Chuckaway Lumumba was the lawyers for all them guys in the 60s and the 60s uh, civil rights movement. Did you know that? Yeah, and, and Judge Adam Shakur also was the head judge of the Detroit 36th District Court, which is the biggest court this part of Michigan. Black man, head judge. Okay, I was taught by these guys, man. And, and Dr. Adam Shakur, his father used to take him. He was the, a, a direct student of Joel A. Rogers. You know what I'm saying? He knew him personally. He was a student of Joel A. Rogers, and and he was also my teacher, which means that I come from the Joel A. Rogers school of thought. Yeah. You know, I try to tell cats, man, you know, they, they, they don't, like Sarnetta, for instance, he talk all of this stupid stuff about and posting these pictures with him, him and uh, Dr. Collins. But see, what they don't, what, what people don't understand is that when every time Dr. Khaled came to Detroit after he left the Nation of Islam, they don't understand that that man's life was in my hands the minute he touched down in this city. Sarnetta, you, you, you talking about how you know and all of this and Dr. Khaled, you don't know me. You know, when Dr. Khaled touched down, his life was in my hands. You see, because when he came to Detroit, he didn't come here to see the Nation of Islam. Nor was the Nation of Islam going to protect him. They was beefing with him and trying to kill him. Okay? And when he came to Detroit, he came here to see a brother by the name of Malik Shabazz. I used to run with Malik Shabazz. And I turned my Israelite brothers on to Malik Shabazz. I had a loose knit Israelite organization, you know, and the guys from my group was also, I anything that I was doing, I, I encouraged them to do. So I was running with the new black, uh, the, what is it, the uh, new Marcus Garvey movement. That's what it was called at that time. Now it's the new Marcus Garvey Black Panther movement. But I was running with the new uh, Marcus Garvey movement up under Malik Shabazz, okay? And my Israelite brothers were the ones that Malik Shabazz was sent to the airport to, to go get uh, Stokely Carmichael, okay? Uh, uh, Geronimo Pratt. When he came to Detroit, we went to the airport to get him. Took him to where his hotel rooms was at, and we protected that man. You understand? Now, myself, personally, I didn't protect them, but my Israelite brothers did. And they before they accepted the excitement, you know what I'm saying, they came and asked me for my permission first. What do I think? And I told them, do it. And, 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 and Dr. Collett, when he came to Detroit, I knew everywhere he was at. Every stop he was at, I knew where he was at. If I was a devil, I could have had that man killed. You understand what I'm saying? This is how this man's life was in my hands, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, every one of those civil rights leaders that came down here that the Israelites went to get, they got permission for me to do it. And I knew every spot that these men was at. Many of the times, I went down there to the airport to get these guys. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so these guys with this Kemet stuff, man, they talk a whole lot of stuff and a whole lot of goofy stuff. This guy swear up and down that 
uh, uh, Dr. Collett was the scholar of scholars, but a lot of that Israelite shit he be, he was talking, he got that shit from us right here from Detroit, bro. <laughs> You know, the Israelites would sit down in dialogue with my man. You know what I'm saying? And be opening his eyes all the way up. You know? But you said something about SETI. You know, so you came in up under Sarah suit and SETI, huh? You there with me? Yeah, so you came in up under Sarah Suit and City, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, when I, well, I mean, I can't say just came under him because before that, I probably was, I was listening to kind of like Dr. York, you know what I'm saying? And okay, then, yeah. okay, so you had a sense of black consciousness before the Kimmy thing then. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, I like the study, I like the way, he, I didn't like his teachers because he never taught the comedic teachers. Right, he was, he, right. He was exposed to people. So I like how he exposed the nation of Islam, how he exposed the Moors, you know, that kind of, that got me. Then when I started seeing what they was teaching, he actually admitted, yes, we worship the sun and all that. That's when I fell back from him. Yeah, but you know, this guy, this guy's teaches not only the worship of the sun, but a lot of that stuff, man, is just straight up guesswork. You know, a lot of, most of that stuff that said he be saying is, is, is just sound good information. You know, because the truth of the matter, at at some point in time, the Moors were heroes to black people in blackness. Yeah. You know, the Moors so end up selling out up under Rome, but at one point they were the uh, the harbangers for blackness. Yeah. You know, after it, 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 somewhere after Islam came on the scene. The more it's starting to become like sellouts and stuff, you know. But at one point, they were the harbingers of blackness. And when you look at it, it's no more different than like the Nation of Islam. You know, back in the city, 60s, they were the harbingers of blackness. But today, they ain't too much of nothing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Today... Many say that the Nation of Islam sold out to a white man by the name of L. Ron Hubbard. Huh? Yeah, no, it's just like everybody watered down now. Yeah. And that, that's what it was like with the Moors. At one point in time, the Moors were the harbangers of, of, of blackness. You know? They still do they got, they got the people called the Razzle or the Moors. They called the what? You heard about the Razzle or the Moors? The people that was on the highway with the guns and trying to stop the, uh, stay, they were stopping traffic and then the police came and locked them up and they said they had a right to do it or something. I don't know that. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. Wow. When was yeah, this? They be, crazy. they be moving in like banning houses and saying the house deals. And yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Like, oh, fuck? yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I didn't know that they be doing that stuff with the guns and the freeways and stuff. I didn't know all that. Yeah, but... These people call Razzle the Moors. I don't know who the hell they like. Some new boy people call Razzle So it's a new, it's a new, it's a new knockoff movement. Yeah, because you know, there's a couple of them. It's the Science Temple, and there's the people on the Jubilee. Um, there's on the Noble. Then you got the Razzle the Moors. Then you and got you got the, you got the Mulanics. Yeah, then you got then you got the Moors, Hebrew, Islamic, like. That's what, like, kind of like what my Hebrew is. Yeah. Now, when you talk about the Moabite, if I'm not mistaken, that's the uh, Moore's Temple of Science. I have a Yeah, all of that stuff, if I'm not mistaken, is knockoffs. They are knockoffs from the Moore's Temple of Science. Yeah. You know, just like all these little One West groups, they are knockoffs from the, uh, what's that, the UPK? Yeah. And that's what well, well, all of my knockoffs from West One. One West? One, one West, yeah, but they but Ty SBK says they are the original because but they, they not the of the West One. That's what they're trying but to they do. But they not, you know. Did yeah. you not know that man that that what where where Johanna started up the uh the, the ISUPK, like two thousand eight or something? Um Yeah, they fell off they fell over two thousand after the prophecy. 
Yeah, and and, and he started back up like 2008 or some shit, you know. Uh, it, it was, I started listening to him about 2000. I started listening to about 2013. Yeah, they, they uh, put it like this. In 2005, there was no ISU PK. This is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, why they trying to lie and say that they go all the way back to that stuff that yeah, took place. It, yeah, and they don't. You know what I'm saying? They don't go back that far at all. They, they, I think they go back to like 2008. Yeah. You know, the, the, well, Aria, I think Aria closed down <coughs> the ISUPK. <coughs> I forget, excuse me, I got some good herbs over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he closed down the ISUPK, man. And uh, I can't think of when, uh, exactly when he did it. Okay? And some years went by, and then Yohanna came on the scene and restarted it. You know what I'm saying? He and he did. Yohanna did what, uh, like what Louis Farrakhan did to the Nation of Islam. Okay, yeah. you know it, the Nation of Islam was first up under Elijah Muhammad, right? Elijah Muhammad died. His son immediately became his predecessor. Right away. Wow. Wallace. Yeah. Yep. Wallace Dean immediately became the predecessor, and then Wallace Dean had became a Sunni Muslim. And he yeah. began to start telling people that his father was a fraud. Yeah. You know, and a lot of his teachings were not the truth. And he did not like uh, the so-called Master Wallace Farad Muhammad. He didn't like him. Yeah. He didn't like him because he believed that he was a white man. And he couldn't understand why his daddy was teaching all this black stuff. But it, at the end of the day, it all originated from this white man. You know, uh, yeah. Wallace Dean said he never could understand that. So Wallace Dean actually shut the whole school down and, 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 and took the followers and converted them to Sunni Islam. Yeah, but see, and see, this is the thing, too. Everybody today has a teacher, a teacher pieces from Elijah Muhammad and not even know it. Anybody, I tell anybody... Is that anybody that's teaching that the white man is the devil comes straight directly from Elijah Muhammad. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Elijah Muhammad all day. You know, yeah, so uh, 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 and he brought that. Taking, it's teaching that half because if you, if you look at the roots of the base of Islam, you got the five centers, you got the, uh, the gods of earth, you got Moors, you got um, um, even even Sebi would tell you that Elijah Muhammad taught him how to, um, not, to be, um, not to eat meat. So it's a lot of groups that's that's basically branch of a nation of Islam. Well, I think I think that we all have been influenced by them to some degree because, like I was stating, that they were the harbingers of blackness. You know, uh, wasn't nobody talking that black stuff, man, like they was when they no. were hot. You know what I mean? Period. You know, and if they was, they wasn't getting the publicity. You know what I mean? You know, I'm quite sure the black Israelites were talking that stuff. We was around in the 60s and the 50s and all that. But the black Israelites wasn't as radical back then as the nation of Islam was. You, you understand what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is that, like, your, your boy Yohanna, I mean, your boy Yohanna was like Farrakhan. Because when Wallace Dean shut the nation of Islam down, I think he shut it down like in uh, uh, 19... 74 or 75, right? Or something like that. And then I think in like 1978, I think, no, I think like in the 80s or early 80s or something like that. It was the late 70s or the early 80s. It'd it, it, it been like about five or six or seven years. A, a nice little time had went by where there was just no more Nation of Islam. You know what I mean? And, and, and Louis Farrakhan came on the scene and resurrected the Nation of Islam. You know, and that's what, that's what General Yohanna has did. You know what I'm saying? So basically, the Nation of Islam that Louis Farrakhan teach 
technically is not the same nation of Islam that Elijah Muhammad had. Just like the ISUPK is not the school that Masha and Ariadne started. You know, keep in mind that Masha closed down the ISUPK and took those followers and started up a whole nother school. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so that ISU... The dude that taught the uh, Shonda he ain't even with them no more. Now who was that? I thought it was, I thought I thought that that was I thought that was some of Aria's creation. At least that's what yeah, I was told. Yeah, that was Aria, but he ain't with ISP. He with another group. Yeah, he yeah he started that other group I was talking about. Yeah, Masha started uh he started that group with Jermaine Comfy Grant and all of them cats. Yeah, because when I went to the um the 2014 cookout, you know I, they was I asked one of them where the cookout was at. He got mad at me like I was about to we was about to get to fighting. And so I found out where the cookout was at, and they was walking past the cookout, was grating on us in the cookout. So I asked the Zarya, I was like, I said, man, what's up with these dudes? Why are they, they grating on us, man? I'm like, they, they, they Israelites? He was like, yeah, but they from another camp. And that's when I learned that, hey, like, these niggas are banging up here. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, there was an actual fight. Yeah. A big, like, game fight. It might have been like at a meeting or some type of cookout or something. I, I don't know what it was. But it was an actual fight between the ISUPK and Ariaz group. Yeah, I heard about that. It was like a big a big game brawl. All the elders are were students under West One and they left and created their own camps and they don't like each other. That's basically all that is. Yeah. I heard some new information the other day. I can't remember exactly what it was. But somebody uh, was talking about, I think it was that guy, uh, what's that guy named, your God, the witch finder general or something. He came out, with, uh, with, and it kind of startled me because this was the first fucking video that he ever made where he was kicking some real factual information. And I guess that was because he was a part of that organization at one time. But almost anything he say about any other or Israelite organization, you know what I'm saying? That's, a lot of that stuff be just straight up false, man. And, and when he get to talking black history, a lot of that stuff be straight up pseudo. You know, but he was talking about the history of the ISUPK. And uh, he came up with, I forget, what, what was the reason he said that, uh, that the school broke up for? It was like on some real scam type stuff. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't for a reason that we that we was taught. You know what I mean? You see, Nate Nate said it had something to do with they broke up over some contract that the Rashikrushans came in. You know, but basically some sellout shit. But your God said it was something, it was something different. My understanding, they told me that. It mostly it started ending when uh they started teaching different like some of the teachers started students started teaching different doctors like uh the dude from GMS was saying that you can rape people and then um they made uh Tazadoc uh the comforter yeah so that's what the ladder that's when the ladder it went down kind of went down. yeah a lot of people they, left you know, Aria because he Ari, what Aria was doing was trying to reincarnate biblical characters into. Yeah. The leaders of their organization today. Okay, you're John the Baptist. You're Jesus. You're the Comforter. You know, you're Moses. You know, and all of that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, they were trying to tell. They were trying to go as far as telling people that they are the reincarnation of ancient biblical prophets. Yeah. And characters. You know, personages. You know, a lot of people left on that. When, a, a lot of people, but what really, when when they all busted up is when, uh, what they, cause they was all together up, on, you know, around 1999, you know, they was all like one organization pretty much, you know, and, uh, what, what Ari and them got to talk about Christ was coming in 19, at the end of 1999, and he didn't come, that, uh, a lot of people left because of that. Yeah, you know, you got to understand, man, that a lot of people really, 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 at one point, 
Aria was a very, very, very powerful man. You know, I would say before uh, 2000, Aria, them people would have done anything Aria said. You know, and when they find out, you know, when you, when you find out that this stuff is a fraud, then a lot of people was heartbroken and just left, man. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. this guy talking about Christ is going to return, and people believe in this man with their whole heart. You know, I mean, there were people standing on in New York, standing on top of them buildings, waiting for Christ to come out the sky and shit. Oh man, you should see the new. You should see this new video I just seen. It was some. It was man. It was like probably a hundred black Israelites. They sit down in the street, man. They see some lights in the sky, and all they they just start screaming and yelling towards the sky and praising Yahweh. So I was like, man, look at this. I was like, this is crazy. This should be tired, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and you know, people standing on the rooftops of them tall ass apartment buildings in New York. You know what I'm saying? You know, cause you anybody when you live in an apartment building, you can go up to the roof. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you got access to the people be up there barbecuing and shit and all kind of stuff. You're hanging their clothes up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, uh, so if people was all up on the rooftops up there waiting for him and he never came, you know, a lot of people, man, quit. They, you know, imagine, man, you know, you believe in this in your whole heart, right? You know, and you already. You know, you already got this thing that I'm an Israelite and, 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 and I'm, I'm God's chosen, which means I am the cream of the crop. You know, I don't like America. I don't like you, white man. You the devil, all this old foolishness. And, you know, and then imagine that, you know, okay, I think Christ's coming tomorrow. You know, well, my last day of work, you know, well, since, you know, you know how you get your break before Christmas and, and, and New Year's and all that. Well, my last day at work, I might cuss my boss out. Yeah. I don't care. I'm, if Jesus coming tomorrow or next week. <laughs> I'm out of here anyway. I don't give a damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you get nasty with your boss. You don't give a shit because you know you're going to go to a better place or or be with the Lord or whatever. However way they taught y'all what was supposed to happen. You know, you know all you know is that Christ supposed to dominate, and this job pretty much after 2000 ain't going to be worth nothing. You know? So they cuss their bosses out, you know, walk off the job and carry it on home. And then January 1st, 2000, Christ ain't came. And he ain't came 2002, 3, 5, 10, February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 10, you know, and on and on and on. You know, and you realize yeah, that people don't remember that they made two, they made two prophets, they made two thousand. I think somebody else um, tried to prophesy and say it was like two thousand and ten. Yeah, and they never, and they never, and whatever they did, they could, they, they were trying to push it back at first, and they were trying to yeah. come up with all kind of reasons why it didn't happen. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what they were trying to do. You know, lying and carrying on, making up stuff. You know. But yeah, man, I mean, but just imagine, you know, hell, I'm not finna pay my damn mortgage this month. Jesus is coming tomorrow. Right? I ain't finna pay my car note this month. In fact, I knew he was coming. I knew he was coming already. So I stopped paying my car note two, three months ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then he don't come, man, your whole life. You can get your whole goddamn life up, bro. And see, I don't like the camp because there's a lot of them that come along commercial, like messing with Sarnetta. And like I said, the Zaria, like I told him, I always go respect them as far as because he one of the people that woke me up into, you know, just, uh, believing in, uh, you know, who we are and yeah. stuff. So, but as far as now, I don't, I don't, I, I, I kind of fell back from him because I see him on camera. He's talking about how he don't respect no OT Israelites. How you don't even look at his Israelites, but then you'll go on a show with a man that's an atheist and tell you that your God is a liar and a murderer. Oh, he said, he say, fuck that. God. Excuse yeah. my English, but I have to say that. That's yeah. what he said, man. Yeah. You know, wow, bro. 
I mean, even if you, I mean, if I don't believe in your God, I don't have to go around here and say, uh, fuck the Buddha. Yeah. You know, uh, fuck Shintoism. You know, uh, fuck the Pentecostal church. But see, that's, that's like me, that's like you said, that's like saying, fuck Buddha, like, but I'm a Buddhist, and I'm saying, fuck, I'm saying, I'm a Buddhist, but I believe Buddha, the Buddha is God, and then there's other people, Buddhists, don't believe Buddha is God, so I don't deal with them, but then I'm going to go to this atheist who's saying, fuck Buddha, period, and yeah. I'm going to be more friends with him. That don't make any sense to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's fake, it's phony. You know what I'm saying? It's satanic. It's yeah. very, very, very satanic. You know, and yeah, the truth. Yeah, and the truth. You really gonna see Tazaria get on a on a on a, on a YouTube with a uh, with with Zion Lex by himself without Zion without Zion Never. He don't want. He don't want it with Zion Lex. See, you know what I'm saying? But he'll go on Zion Never quick. You know, Zion Lex. Yeah, Zion Lex will tell you and have said it, man. I will kill that guy. This guy don't know history. This guy really don't know the real essence of the Bible. And this guy do not speak Hebrew. And he called it out several times. Like, okay, now what you want to do? You know, I would. Now if he ever did that to me, nigga, we finna go ahead and de- we finna bang it out. Cause I ain't afraid of Zion. I will bust Zion motherfucking head on his Hebrewism. Now when he want to get all off into Kemet and Samaria and all that other shit, you know, he may he may have the edge on me. But there's other things that I may have the edge on him in. That, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how God blesses us. But on a straight Israelite debate, man, I will comb Zion's motherfucking head, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't say to listen to you plenty of times, so I already know. And I listen to Zion. I mean, like I said, Zion's a great, he's, he's a great teacher as far as trying to, because, I mean, I respect him because he's fighting back. And, and like I said, he's, he's learning these shit to fight against him with it. I, I agree with that, but it's a lot of times, the things I don't like about these scholars on YouTube is they get a lot of information from other people and they don't recognize these people and they make it seem like that they are just getting this information yeah. out of nowhere. See, I think, I, I think Zion is a great guy, man, but see, I got problems with any Israelite. The most had, had told me to make a, a show. A couple months ago, I don't know whether you heard it, well, I was warning Israelites to stay off the, the side of the show. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Woohoo! That was a good one. That was that, was that good one right there, E. <laughs> that was that good one. But, uh,. Y'all was warning this guy, man, to stay, these guys to stay off the Sarnetta show. And this was like the next day after he fell out with Zion Lex and uh, Mike, the Gorilla Hebrew and he caught his wife a gorilla or a monkey or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I would tell you what I don't like about Zion Lex, man. You know what I'm saying? And it makes me don't fuck with him. You know? I res- like you say, I've got respect for him. I, that's why I say I understand why you can have a respect for a person. But when you see them doing stupid shit, you know what I'm saying, that, that it makes you fall back from them. You know, I had high respect for Zion Lex, man. But see, Zion Lex has proven to me to be more of an arrogant man, you know what I'm saying, than he is a scholar. Yeah. And that arrogance get so in the way, man, that it's nasty and it's ugly. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a past in these streets, Eric. You know, I am a violent felon, okay? And I am one of them guys who really want to do good and right about my life, okay? Yeah. You know, if I go out here and commit violent crimes, I can end up in a penitentiary for the rest of my life. Because I, I got a bad past. I'm talking about a very, very, some shit like you see on TV, hitman type past. You hear what I'm saying? Okay. Like I'll tell the mighty Hebrew, man, I'm one of them guys, man. My past, man, my record got things on there like me coming up in your house and you not knowing that I'm there, man. Why you in there? And I come in there while you sleep, man, and snatch that cover off your head and whip out that thriller. You see? 
I was one of them type cats, E. So, I, I mean, I, I, I liked how he did, you know, his Garfield uh, dissertation. You know what I'm saying? You know, but he said some things like, you know, I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I'm humorous, but I also slapped the shit out you. You know, and that made me feel some kind of way, man. You know what I mean? I didn't like that. Yeah. You hear me? You know, I, I'm talking about righteousness. And what made me respect him so much was that I've seen him in, in the most brutal brawls. And his words, you know, his words is what gave him the victory. Not the idea that he would slap the shit out of somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that's why I like Divine Prospect. He's so articulate that he don't have to be violent. His words are so strong and so dominant. You, you understand? Mighty Hebrew. Them boys don't have to have to sit up there and be talking about how they're going to beat people up and this, that, this, and that. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. it, you know it, it's the words that they be saying to be so dominant and so powerful. You know, you turn me off, man, when you start talking all this crazy violent stuff, man. Because the truth of the matter, if Garfield disrespect, any man disrespect you, you know what I'm saying? You add more value to your character by getting out of that person's presence. Right? Like, stay off side of the show. Right? The hell with Garfield. Right, you know, it, it, you know, you know, you you don't have to be, you know. I just seen him and Garfield one on one with each other. You know what I'm saying? One on one with each other, talking to each other, this and that, this and that. You know, I'm just saying, you know, if, if a person disrespect me, I'm just gonna leave him alone, and I have nothing to do with him no more. You know, because you can't disrespect what's not there, right? Yeah. You know, you at and see. Your words and your presence as a man is so valuable that this person is just not valuable enough. He is not worthy enough to be in your presence, man. He's not worthy enough to hear that great knowledge and wisdom that you're speaking. So get out of his presence. You, you add value to yourself when any person disrespect you, male or female, to just leave. Right? Yeah. You talking about you won't slap the shit out of them and all that crazy shit, man. The only way that an Israelite should deal in violence is only in self-defense. See, Zion, you talking about slapping the shit out of them. <laughs> but you declaring war now. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I'm not yeah. that stuff ain't worth fighting over, man. Use that light in them powerful words, man. Trust me. That's all you need. When you start diverting to all of that other stuff, it becomes a turnoff, you know. But, yeah, I dig how you was talking about, you know, how you got respect for certain cats, you know, like Tazariak. But when you start seeing all this crazy stuff, it kind of make you fall back. And that's why I brought up Zion Lex, you know. It was the same way with him. I had mad respect for him. And I still got respect for his knowledge, man. But I don't watch him and, and, and like that no more. You know, every time he used to come on, I used to, man, that was my man Zion. He about to get it in. Today, man, I, won't, I don't even run to this shit. I might catch it later. And if I don't, I don't. And most of the time, I don't. You know, I wanted to support his channel. But if you're going to be on your channel doing a whole bunch of stupid and foolish stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I, I, man, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old, Zion. I'm older than you, man. I don't have that, that much time to be on this planet to be playing around like that, man. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to listen to the knowledge. All that other stuff, man, y'all can save that. And that's why when I try to teach, I try to keep all of that bull crap out of, out of my teachings and just try to focus on what I'm trying what I'm trying to say the message what happened, what happened is like I told dude debating is not debating
baiting it was before. If people say the baiting supposed to be we scrapping. Yes, the baiting supposed to be scrapping. But it don't supposed to be attacking each other personally. It's yeah. supposed to be giving each other It's a mental wisdom. It's a mental sparring. Yeah. Not a it's fucking it's war. It's supposed to be for the two opponents. It's supposed to be for the listener. Yeah. So I'm supposed to be able to understand what both of y'all are saying. But I go and research the shit y'all are saying. But when y'all attacking each other saying, oh, this nigga this and this nigga that, that's not debating. And that's, yeah. what, that's where people are mixing the debates up now. With. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it, you know. Because, like, you know, a debate is a mental sparring. You know, yeah. it's, it, it, that's all it is. It's not a declaration or an act of warfare. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's, no, there's no such thing as the real, as a, as a best debater ever. You know? you know, it's like all that titles that people using, like, it's not no best debater. Because it's, it's other debaters, other places you can debate. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Zion, Zion Lex said that he was the GOAT, the greatest of all times when it comes to this debate shit. And man, I will snatch your ass out the frame in this de- debate shit, bro. I don't know how you figure that. And it's probably the reason why you don't want to sit on the same platform with me and why you don't want nothing to do with me, which is the same reason why Sinetta don't want to sit on the same platform with me. Man, some of y'all guys, I'll make y'all boys look really, really bad. That spotlight that you got on you w- w- will be taken if I'm on that show, man. <laughs> you, see, see, I'm that type of guy, man. You thought you arrived until you heard me. <laughs> you did for real man and that's how it is bro you know you you can't be walking around here saying you know things like that you like you said you ain't never heard there's just some people out there you never even heard man exactly you know i don't say i'm the beta, the greatest debater ever but I, I will tell you that i am the most formidable israelite alive and i am yeah that means the see, most feared not, and respected. Yeah, but see, that's not like a competition thing. That's from you. That's from you. Uh, your research of and your experience of years and years and years of doing it. Yep. You know, you, you understand that there ain't a lot of people that became Israelites that have been doing it as long as you. Like, that's I right. I've been an Israelite. I probably only been an Israelite for like seven years. I got like thirty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? More than Zion, uh, uh, mighty Hebrew, probably about running neck to neck close to me. Zion, a mighty Hebrew, uh, 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 you know, Zet Lexnum, Lexnum, uh, uh, they, they got years, but they ain't got as much as me. Yeah, yeah. You know, now you got Zabak and them, them guys got years in it like me, but they knowledge, they knowledge been so capped off long ago. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they doctorated, so it's like they ain't, they yeah, it's not growing, you know what I'm saying? It's like capped off. <laughs> Put the cap on it, E. <laughs> yeah. Put the cap on the bottle, E. <laughs> Fill it up, you know what I'm saying? And put the cap on it. So okay, no more go in there. <laughs> we don't want no more, we don't need no more, we're gonna stop it right here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I just, I just think, like I said, it's just, I think everything is watered down. Like the teachers, it's not really too much teacher, and the real teachers who really can teach, is not really trying to be in groups and stuff. And the, yeah. the, the ones that the false ones is taking over the groups and, and more yeah. people. Yeah. See, because it, the, what happens is that let's say guys like me, when I join groups, there becomes immediate conflict and a uh, fight for power. You know what I'm saying? And the truth of the matter, guys like me, I don't even want no power. I just want to be heard. You know what I'm saying? The other guy is in the fight for power and positioning, and you are a threat to that. Yeah. I mean, the reason I believe I couldn't, the reason I believe I could never join, stay in a group that I tried to join is because I'm a person that asks questions. I'm not going to let you just tell me anything. Yeah. And those really groups you get, you get to asking too many questions in them groups, man, and they be about ready to ostracize you. Yeah, yeah. You know I what I'm saying? Told me, you don't be asking questions. We know the truth already. You don't ask this and this and that. So I'm like, man, nah, I ain't going to be no slave. <laughs> well, what do you say? What, what's understood don't need to be explained. <laughs> you know, like, tell me, I'm out. Like, you ain't going to tell me how you can just tell me anything. Because I, I, I was in the ICBK class. 
they was talking about the 12 trap chart. Yeah. Right? They started talking about this this trap and this and this trap. So when I asked him, I said, when y'all talking about Cuba or Haiti or, or what's this, something like Cuba or Brazil, y'all saying these people, are, I said, so who are y'all talking about? Yeah. I said, because there's three people in Brazil. It's Spanish people, then you got the indigenous people, and then you got the people that's supposed to go on the boats. So I yeah. said, which one are you saying? Is this trap because if you're saying that, then the people that come off the boat has to be Benjamin or, 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 um, or, or Judah, according to you. They can't be this trap. Yeah. You know, now, and they ain't want to, they ain't want to break it down that deep. It just, it just know Brazil is this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, which, which is, which my research have just straight. I couldn't find no, no proof or evidence of none of that foolishness. But uh, th- this, this, this podcast here, I'm going to have to bring it to an end pretty soon. I want it to be roughly, yeah. I only I want it roughly to be about an hour. Anything more than an hour becomes hard to upload to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you want a part two with this, then you know I can. We can shorten it out, and and, and we can start up another one, and you can finish your thought. Or we could just meet up at another time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we, we can do another one tomorrow. Like I said, we can just do it in the morning. You know? Okay. Um, yeah, and the I, beauty. I try to, I at least hit him with one. You don't want to hit him with too much at one time. Yeah. Know, it's too far, you know? Yeah. You know, that's one thing that bothers me, man. Kind of short now. Yeah, these Israelites be having these two and three hour videos. I be trying to make my... I, I'm learning, man, to try to make it uh, short, yeah. concise, and concentrated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and, and, and get it over with, you know? I mean, it's, it really gets on my nerves, man. When I look at these guys, like, and they be making these three and four hour videos and two and three hours, even an hour, you know, an hour plus, hour, 20, 30 minutes. Man, you really, really, really want to take that much time out of my life? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Especially for me to watch some goofy shit. Yeah, on a subject that really ain't going to do nothing about it, like, really ain't going to change nothing. <laughs> I just don't yeah, got that kind of time, about. man, to dedicate to you niggas like that, man. Yeah. Like, how you still having the base on is Jesus real? Like, what do, I mean, what, who cares? If you believe it, you don't, you don't, you don't. Like, what, what is that going to do for our people? If you yeah. believe it or not, it's not going to do anything. It's like, that's just a dumb debate. Well, I have a show that I, that I recorded uh, uh, one day last week that I never published. And I, I was pretty much talking about that. You know, I was pretty much talking about that, but uh, Anchor is giving me heads up, and I only got maybe three minutes left, so, yeah, we gonna sign out, man, get ready to sign on out, and uh, if you like to come back tomorrow, man, you know, hey, get it in with me, bro, uh, we can do a, we can do a couple of them. I'm gonna talk about the CRT thing, you know, that's going on. Okay, yeah, we're gonna do, we, we, we'll do one tomorrow about the CRT. And uh, and it's it, called critical race theory. So people are listening, I know what that is. Well, it's good that we calling it out now, so we letting the listeners know that tomorrow it, we, we're going to be putting out some more uh, some more information, you know. But yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, and that's good, you know. That way they'll be prepared, you know. Yeah, so we can do it again tomorrow. I'm off all next week, okay. I'm okay. off all next week. And I'm on vacation. But I have to run down to the hospital. You know what I'm saying? So somehow between this and that, we can go ahead and get it in. Okay. But that being that, you can say your final sayings, man, and you got like a minute, and then we, we closing out. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just going to say, it's cool that we debate on ancient history, because we do need to know our past before here. But the most important history to me is I tell people the slave history and what happened here from civil uh, rights to the sharecropping to, uh, to slave effects. Uh, when we start debating, I would like for us to start debating more on stuff like molestation, human trafficking, um, you know, just just stuff that we that's, that's real important to the community right now that we got to fix right now. That, that we can't ignore and we can't keep ignoring because it's going to get worse. All right, all right. That'll be it. And this is Eric, mad scientist, true knowledge, true heart. This is Yasha Ben Israel, Terry Whitfield, for the Yasha Ben Israel, Terry Whitfield podcast show, signing out.